Well, women's rights, I hope, is that women can have equal rights with everyone in society, but especially I want women to have the right to try to pursue their lives the way they want to pursue them. If they want to be mothers, if they want to have a career, if they don't want to be mothers, that women should have the right and freedom to try to pursue their lives the way they would like to pursue them. Excellent. What makes you support Women's Rights Information Center? Well, Women's Rights Information Center was started to help women cope with the changes that the women's movement brought on. And it helped them to cope with the changes in society, but we still need it now because women need a, need a place to turn to if they are having problems coping with uh, raising kids or being displaced homemakers or aging or any of the problems that women have because they also have the additional, still stronger burden of raising children and take caring for the young and caring for the old. And uh, they need, I think it's a little special help and they need a place to turn to. So I think Women's Rights Information Center helps women to uh, be self-sufficient. It gives them skills and information and referrals so that they can cope with the extra, <clears throat> little bit extra burdens that they might have in society and deficiencies that they might have to face. Perfect, perfect. Due to their burdens. Women's Rights Information Center is a resource for women in our area who need help. And they can come to Women's Rights Information Center, any woman, whether you're in a government program or a private program or, or not in any program. If you need help, this is a place that women can go to get help with any of their problems. They can get advice, they can learn skills, and uh, even men also can come there. Any person in our area who's struggling can come there, but it's particularly designed for to help women. And one of the best things they do, for example, is they have skilled professional lawyers who donate their time to help women with problems with divorce or custody issues or even, I think, immigration issues. They have these lawyers who donate their time and for only $10 donation, if they can handle it, the women or people who come to Women's Rights Information Center can get a half an hour with a professional lawyer and get advice on how to get started in coping with their issues. They can have citizenship classes. They can have English as a second language classes. And something, and I know they do a lot. They'll answer any question, give referral for any issue. Housing, we have a wonderful program, Shared Housing, where if a woman is homeless or has nowhere to live, they'll try to match the person up with someone who has extra housing and try to make a deal and find congenial people who can help each other. And I'm trying to start a program, I'm trying to help with uh, uh, high school equivalency education. A big thing that Women's Rights Information Center does is help women get ready for job interviews, know how to do a job interviews, computer skills. And one thing is a lot of women get their education interrupted. Maybe they don't finish high school. So I love to teach um, high school, I love to help women prepare for the high school equivalency exam. So I'm doing a lot of that at the Women's Rights Information Center. I'm teaching a group of women who need to study for that test. So I enjoy that very much. So they have, and I also run a book group uh, on um, women's diversity book group. And we examine all different issues of diversity from a women's point of view. And I've been doing that for a long time. So we do many, many different, so many different services and with a caring and informed way. The people there, the staff, the volunteers are all big hearted and knowledgeable and everybody's doing their very best to help whoever comes in the door or calls on the phone. <laughs> Oh, I'm so honored because I've been involved with Women's Rights Information Center almost from the beginning, and I knew Phoebe Seaham very well, and uh, she was the founder, and I'm getting an award in her honor, under her name, which is a very big up for me, a very big honor and thrill, and I knew her almost from the beginning, and she saw that I did a lot of volunteer work, fundraising, and a lot of work for other women's organizations. So that's why she asked me to 
come on stream. She saw me do work for American Association of University Women, fashion shows, fundraisers, and she saw me do work for League of Women Voters and many other organizations. So that's why she invited me to join the board. And I finally did agree to join the board and I've been on the board for a long time. We don't know exactly how long, but a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've enjoyed everything I've done and found meaningful everything I've done for Women's Rights Information Center because uh, I really feel like I've been able to participate in helping a lot of women through the organization. If I have any time or any money available, I really want to help people when they get in trouble, women particularly, as others have helped me when I've had a hard time. When you have a bad spell and someone reaches out and someone helps you, it's just the greatest thing in the world and that's why if I have any extra time or any extra money this is the cause that I want to put it toward because of how I've been helped in the past. Women's rights are basic human rights. You can't have human rights overall without including women. We are 50 percent of the population so women's rights are essentially human rights. The Women's Rights Information Center is, is such a warm, welcoming place for women to go. Um, women that have been um, maybe displaced as homemakers or um, it, some such of, of um, need some assistance, need some support. And that's the place where they go for support. It's such a welcoming, you walk into the door and everybody has a smile on their face and they're welcoming and they're warm. And, and that is, is, is almost like a hug that you get when you walk in the door. That's the kind of support that is important. They do so much for the community, from shared housing to the clothing to, uh, they, they do so much for the community. It's not just for women, it elevates the community. In, in, in its entirety. So it's not just for women. Yes, it is the Women's Rights Information Center, but it, it, when, in elevating that, it elevates the whole community. Wow. Um, so that, that actually takes my breath away. Um, to, to be among giants in this, in this field and, and to be among uh, people that do so much, it's, it's just breathtaking. It really is breathtaking. There, there are so many talented, wonderful women that work there that are part of it or a part of the organization, um, that support the organization. To be considered as, as part of them is, is just, it's breathtaking. Yeah, and it's quite an honor. So I think it comes down to um, individual values. Right? Um, in, in individual values, we all want to be part of something bigger. Right? We all want to contribute. We, when we leave this earth, we all want to feel like we have contributed. We left it just a little bit better than when we came in, or just a little bit different than we came in. So it's, it's very important. Philanthropy is very important because it's, it's a way to, to contribute. And, and that's part of a value system, to be of contribution to your fellow man, to society in general. So that's very, very important. I think their first step would be to go down and visit and, and, and feel the atmosphere and, and feel the energy in the room and, and see what they're really supporting. Um, I think that would be my, my first recommendation to them. And, and they can actually see where their money is going to be spent and, and talk to everybody there and, and feel the energy there. That's very important. Mm -hmm. So for, for, for those people that are in there and that are, are continuing either either considering supporting or continuing to support um, what I what I would say to them is look at where your money is being spent look at how much richer the population gets richer in terms of um, um, value um, richer in terms of um, how uh, compassion grows how um, confidence grows that's important that's something you cannot put a dollar figure on that's something that is, is priceless. You know, that's a value. That's a value added to that, that individual who's coming in off the street and walking in that door and looking for support and, and maybe can't turn anywhere else or, or doesn't know where to turn. That's a value. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I actually have several, um, yeah. yeah, several of uh, my, my own clients that I've referred um, and um, yeah it's it's before and after so before there um, it was a particular client who had um, didn't really think too much of her skills um, I looked at her skills and thought wow that's 
that's an amazing this is a world traveler this is this is an experienced person um, but because of the situation that she was in at the time didn't really see it for herself and I said you know what you need to go to the women's center you really need to go to the women's center and and, and I knew I knew she would get the support that she needed. I knew that somebody else would say to her, wow, what a resume. Wow, that's very impressive. You know, that's, that's incredible. I knew that. I, I was so confident that she would get the support that she needed and, and, and flourish from there. Um, yeah, and, and she's, she's on her way to flourishing. Absolutely, yeah. Excellent. And I've, it, I've encountered quite a few people with trauma. Um, that's one of my specialties, trauma and addiction. And um, one of the women that I've encountered um, recently um, through, through some of my work and, and through some of the other work um, had experienced years and years of trauma and um, had her, her self-esteem, her self-confidence, um, she was, was, was not where it should be um, for a human being, just for a human being, not even for a woman, for a human being. Um, and it, years and years of, of, of being exposed to addiction, um, not herself, but being exposed in living in the household with addiction, um, and being exposed to um, domestic violence and, and severe trauma to herself, to her children. Um, it, 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 she had gone to the women's shelter um, and, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Center for Hope and Safety. And um, at that point, um, I had referred to, she came to me and I had referred her to the women's center. Um, she is since um, is signing up for some courses there. She's she's turning her life around. She has a whole different view of herself, her children. Um, she's a, a, away from the abuser. Um, she's she's away. She's pulled her children out of that situation. She's on her own. She's on her own. She has her own apartment. She's on her own. She's thriving. Um, she's beginning the journey back. And and that support that she got when she walked into the women's center was priceless. That was priceless. That was, hey, you know what? We, we don't have the class then, but let's build something around it. Let's help you get back on your feet. Let's, let's, let's continue on this journey with you. You know, we're, we're part of the journey with you now. And that's the continued support that she gets. And I'm very confident every time I send someone there, I'm very confident that they're going to get that support. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to, to the work that I do. It's very important to, um, it's just very important to humanity to continue to support one another. And, and they're, they're wonderful at doing that. Yeah. So, well, I can tell you from experience where where they would be, um, they would not be flourishing. They would not be on their own. Um, they they would not be building their self confidence back. They would not be supporting themselves, having that that own pride in in their work. They they wouldn't be doing that. I know that to be to be true. I know that. I see that firsthand. I know that. The ripple effect is is amazing. The ripple effect. You, 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 if you can touch one life, and and they can touch one life, you know the the person that I was talking about um, before, um, she has three children. So so this will touch three lives, and so on and so on. So uh, yeah, the ripple effect is is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and will continue. Wow. Philanthropy is very important because it does it does give it gives the donor. Okay, let's talk about what it gives the donor. It gives the donor that sense of, of contribution. Okay, so maybe their gifts are monetary and, and they can't take somebody by the hand and teach them Microsoft Office or teach them Excel, but they could certainly pay for their class because that's in their wheelhouse. It's, it's, it's incredibly important. It's a sense of contribution. I think right away of freedom, strength, uh, passion, devotion, uh, creativity, having a strong voice, being able to live your spirit the way you want to. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what comes to mind first. The cause, the sisterhood, the development of strength within women who really need that place to come and cry and be lifted up and just have women support them who have actually been through what they're going through to you know to, to connect with one person and to find the strength within that person to help you your family 
Um, there's a lot of magic that happens in that building. I mean, there's a lot of really special people in that building. So when you walk through the doors, you can feel it and you feel safe and you're able to express and, and have women who can sit down and look you in the eye and say, we're here to help you and really mean it. Well, everyone says a village, you know, it takes a village to have, to raise a family. And that's very true. Uh, when you have, when you have a place to go to, to help your family, um, it will just make the, the community a stronger place to live, uh, a, an enjoyable place to live, a happy place to live. And it, you know, it filters everything from positiveness just kind of filters down. So it's every town, every city, every community needs a women's center and especially the incredible people that are in it. Uh, I'm philanthropic and I also dress women. I'm a stylist, so I'm in fashion and I listen to women's uh, situations every day and I feel very strongly about building women to be beautiful on the outside, to enhance the beauty on the inside. And it's very true. When you dress really well, you feel like a million dollars and you're able to really take care of yourself, your family. It just, it just perpetuates good and positiveness. And when you feel good, you do good. Oh wow, there's so many things that come to mind. There's so many clients over the 15 years that I've owned my business that will come to mind. Uh, women struggle with weight. We struggle with depression. We struggle with uh, our, our voice. Um, I hear a lot of things in the fitting room. So when I get the client in there, we're, we're trying to build strength through the clothes and but it's also a support system I'm also a sister that's ready to listen to anyone so when you say what story s stays with you the most I just feel helping women look good and there's so many stories you know whether it's divorce whether it's children getting abused and their life you know their their life is not the way that they thought it would be as all of our lives change I think when a woman feels good on the outside with clothes it really does help her throughout the day. It's just one day at a time. <clears throat> so uh, I can't really just name one particular incident because I deal with a lot when I deal, I deal with a lot of issues with that women have that they face and they walk into my store and it's not just about selling clothes. It's about the relationship that I have to build up their self-esteem. So it's, it is selling clothes, but it's also a friendship, a sisterhood. It's a safe place to, you know, feel uh, embraced and loved. So I hope that a lot of women that, do, that walk through the door feel that and I will, I will continue to provide that kind of service and love and, you know, support. everything and support. Well, well, I had a client, should I just start like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I had a client who lost about 35 pounds and went down three dress sizes and was going out with the new boyfriend and was very nervous about it. And so once we got in the fitting room, I got her to step out of her box and, you know, her square because she likes, she doesn't like to try new things. So I finally got her to step out. And uh, after going out on the date, she became very confident because she got so many compliments from the gentleman she was with. And the, the relationship developed and she said, you know, I felt very, very good thanks to you and, you know, for, for trusting you to put me in something that I would have never worn. And I had a really nice time with this gentleman and your, what you gave to me allowed us to really have a great night and hence rolled into a, a really strong relationship turned into a marriage. So I, I'm really happy that I was there for the first date, the first outfit. Um, to carry her through that night, to give her confidence for the next date. And then when they traveled together, she came back to me and said, you know, please help me because I trust you and I know that you'll help me with any anything that I need. So they had a great relationship and I know that that, that helped her and they ended up getting married. So that was a really nice story. Well, what's, what, it, what it is is when you're helping them to, to dress in a way that they are confident, then they can project themselves in a much more positive way. A lot of women, you know, think that they're based on a size. I mean, if they're not a size two, then they're nothing. It's, it's absolutely absurd. So, you know, for them to walk in and say, well, I used to be a size four, but now I'm a 10, you know, what is this already putting yourself down? I mean, the life, you know, we go up size, we go down a size, but it's the mentality of getting them out of a size and getting them into a look that fits their needs, their body, and then sending them off into the world and letting them be as confident as they can be. So it's, it's 
breaking down the wall of, you know, I'm not that size, but what, what person are you? How am I going to get into that? And then let's get that girl out. Let's get her to be happy and positive and healthy. And then you can move into the world and forget all that other stuff. Because as women, we struggle with size and it's, it's nuts. So, you know, we've got to work through that. You have to give back to your community. You have to take notice of what's happening around you, good, bad, and different. You, if, you, if you have a voice and you have a, a, a spot in your community where you can make a difference and you don't, it's, 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 it's bothersome. It is your responsibility as a person who started a business or who is an entrepreneur who has a family that is, you're wrapping your arms around the community to let them know you care. I mean, you got to care about your neighbors. And I think it's ex extremely important to set the example if you have children that you need to make sure that you're taking care of your, your neighborhood and your, and your community. Um, the message is very clear. Just, you know, help when you know you can and love when you know you can and pay attention when you know you can because you make a difference. Women's rights mean everything to me. Um, I think I wasn't aware of how in some ways a lot of progress has been made for women's rights and in many ways no progress has been made for women's rights um, until I started my organization Women for Progress and getting educated about the struggle that women went through to get the vote um, and to be accepted in the workforce to get equal pay which is a battle we're still fighting um, it means everything to me I have two daughters and uh, we're a very matriarchal family in my extended family. And I wanna make sure that my girls are raised to believe that they're just as worthy as a man for any job they get, for any opportunity they get. Um, so advancing women's rights is extremely important to me and part of my life's work. Um, first of all, I adore Lil and I would do anything for her. Uh, I love the center because it speaks to me. I've been a stay-at-home mom for many years before I founded Women for Progress and it's it's challenging and daunting to think about getting back into the workforce and I know the women that come to the center um, have gone through all different things. Domestic violence, they've been out of, you know, been displaced homemakers for many years and to have that place where you can go to get up to date on your computer training and your wardrobe and and um, all these different features that the service or services rather that um, WRIC provides is invaluable and I just think it's wonderful that that's there for women to they're googling they're trying to figure out what their next step is and they know that this is a place they can go to get help um, in advancing their careers supporting their families taking care of their children it's a beautiful thing I think Women's Rights Information Center is a place for hope for women who are trying to get back on their feet and trying to make a great life for themselves and support their families. It's a place where you can go and feel safe and know that you are supported um, and that you're going to make some of your dreams come true. I think it's the first stop for a lot of women along that path. Um, I'm incredibly flattered to be honored as a community change maker. Ever since I started Women for Progress, um, I've been incredibly humbled by the response from the community. Um, we have this incredible team of volunteers that make our work possible. And I think as the face of the organization, sometimes I get the praise, but truly it's my team. Um, we're all volunteers. We've been doing this for a little over two years now. Um, and people are just, they care if they want to help, they want to reach out to different organizations in the community that might need financial support, that might need volunteers. And to have someone recognize our work is wonderful. Um, I know it's my name on the, uh, you know, on the program, but it's my organization and my board and everyone that participates in our events and our membership base that are really the people that should be, you know, considered the honoree tonight. So I'm actually pursuing my master's degree right now in nonprofit leadership at, at Fordham. And philanthropy and, um, we don't call it charity, but philanthropy and giving back is sort of the cornerstone of everything I do. We, our organization is based on giving back to the community. Uh, when we're fortunate, when we're privileged, that's sort of our responsibility and our right, if you ask me. Um, and I feel like teaching our kids really young how to give back is crucial and making sure they know how privileged and fortunate they are to have been just born into the circumstances they're in. Um, I think philanthropy can be a lot more to than giving money. Sometimes people just think, oh, it's a donation. It's about giving your time. It's about educating yourself about what's going on in the world and how you can combat some of the 
terrible things that go on in the world every day from you know sex trafficking to clean water to gun violence there's pick a topic any topic and they need support they need help they need volunteerism they need financial assistance um, so to me philanthropy is really everything women's rights means human rights it means family rights if you're supporting women you're supporting the community you're supporting the kids the men everybody i mean it's really we're we're very inclusive but uh women roots women's rights um means you have the ability to go in whatever direction makes sense and uh we support whatever that direction is and we are encouraging people to um to make the most of their potential and and the more they do that the more they can support their families and their community i just feel the the center itself is in the heart of uh of everything especially today with all the issues and concerns and and events that are going on that we touch so many people and we touch all of those different uh, categories and every time we can help a client to do better at any one of those categories and one any one of those issues um, they can move forward and they can um, and they can progress I work there, I, so uh, the Women's Rights Information Center, every time a person comes in, the fact that they're taking the opportunity to make a change and take advantage of our resources, I think that's so powerful. And I admire all the, all the women and the men who come through that door. Um, I teach the technology classes there, and my focus is, I feel like every person, every client has potential. They don't always know what that is and I try to encourage them and give them confidence by working with them and showing them that they can make small changes, small advances every day. They don't have to learn everything in one day. Um, if they're making small improvements all the time, that they can do it not only here, but in other areas of their life. And, uh, you know, anytime, you know, people can make a change and get that courage, and that confidence, it really, it really expands to other areas and makes it makes a big difference. Um, and, I, and I support that. For the community at large, I think we're a great resource, not only for what we do specifically, uh, we do, um, we help people find jobs, we help people advance their skills, whatever that means, whether it's technology or language or, um, if they have issues with the family, we have legal resources, we have a lot of different things, areas, housing that, that we impact. Um, and the fact that we have certain strengths um, is great, but we also don't leave a client uh, hanging. If we don't have that resource, we find them a resource, we, we connect them with other with other resources and other agencies. So um, we want to help as much as we can anybody who walks through that door. It takes a village. It's true. I believe it. I believe if you, you make mama happy, everybody's happy. And you make a woman happy, then she can, if she can feel better about herself and have confidence, she can encourage her kids to have the same thing. She has the strength and the energy to help her kids help her family, help her, whoever it is who she's touching. Um, and I think, and I definitely think that, uh, you know, you pay it forward, you know, and if you can help one person that they, they get the message and they start helping other people. And I've seen it, I've seen it happen. So uh, I really believe that. I'm an employee. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> this is the first year. Um, Obviously, uh, my my efforts and my uh, activities at the center are appreciated. Um, I really am very humbled and very, 
I mean, I don't feel like I need to be honored. I don't necessarily want to be honored because I'm just doing this because I feel it's important and I really, I don't want to be the, I don't want to have to help everybody. I want them to help themselves. I want to give them the confidence to do that. Um, but I appreciate the fact that other people, you know, that they're acknowledging that, um, that I'm doing good work or that I'm, I'm helping the clients. Um, just the fact that each, any client that's successful, it's more successful than they walk in the door. That's that's really all I all I need. Fantastic. You know, there there are quite a few. I don't know that I can think of any one specific, um, but I do know that there are some people who come through the door and they've already got you know labels um, where they've been identified as a certain a certain category or something. And I've noticed that I don't always get that information. They come into my class, they're there for a reason. They're there to learn. And I don't always get all the information that the case managers have and other people have. And I found that not knowing that has been very useful because I can just deal with them and help them learn at whatever, um, wherever they are in that in that curve or however they do that and we try to we try to i try to teach the class where i'm not only doing you know teaching it one way i try to show people i, I like to, to hear it i like them to see it i like them to try it so there's whatever way people are learning there's a lot of different um ways that happen that we try to attack it in all different um approaches and i've seen that uh, lately, we had a, a, a student who came in who supposedly had disabilities and all sorts of stuff. I didn't know all about that, and we just dealt with her as if she was uh, another client. And she actually mentioned the fact that it was the first time people dealt with her as a person and not as the person with the label. And she was very successful. Um, it doesn't mean she walked away and all the other issues walked away with her. But she had a lot of confidence, and um, she knew that at least in this one category, she could be successful. And I th and I definitely felt like it translated to um, how she behaved and how she socially interacted with the other clients very differently from when she first began the class from when she left. I think philanthropy is important because sharing is important. Helping others, you know, sharing whatever wealth you have, whether it's money or whether it's skills or experience. Um, you know, we, we should all be helping each other because the lowest, you know, if we can make, make the lowest rung higher, it's really good for all of us. Uh, that's what I believe. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of clients come in through the door. Um, yeah, they have, they have a lot of, um, history and a lot of negative things that have happened, um, and, it, you know, by dealing with them and showing them they can be, that we can encourage them in this aspect of their of their life, of this activity, they're gaining confidence and they feel like if they can be confident here, they can use that courage and that confidence in other areas. And uh, I have, yeah, many people come in, they have uh, domestic violence in their background. And, but they didn't have the confidence to go forward and do a lot of things about it or understand it or, or just want to take it on. And after being in the class or starting to be in the class, you can see their transformation, that they're getting more courage, they're getting more confident. And as we talk about um, confidence in general, we also talk about how to approach that when you're looking for a job. A lot of people are, are job hunting is one of the things that they're uh, often looking for but it's impacted by all these other things that all the baggage and the history they bring with them. So um, they definitely come to me at the end of class, say, wow, if I hadn't, you know, you really gave me the courage, you encouraged me, you gave me the confidence or help them to be more confident because I can't give them the confidence, but I, we, we definitely support them. And then they start making different decisions uh, from a DB standpoint, from a legal standpoint, with their kids, and it's it's uh, very heartening, you know, to see that. Um, so that I mean, it just that shows the ripple effect. You know, you, you if you make something positive happen in one area, and all of a sudden, other things can start happening uh, in a positive direction. In the current market, in the current environment, we need all the help we can get.
we always need the help we can get but um, every dollar makes a difference it's a it's a cliche but it's true and uh, it doesn't take a lot of dollars to make a difference to to our clients as far as that's the wrong thing to say wrong mm -hmm. Bad. All right. <laughs> that's not true um, every dollar makes a difference uh, every contribution makes a difference. We appreciate the support of the community. We, uh, there are so many different avenues and activities and areas where people need help, whether it's legal, whether it's, um, you know, attending a class or just, you know, um, just different kinds of support. Uh, but that all takes money and we're in a hundred year old building maintaining that takes a lot of money uh, having staff available to meet and spend time have the time to spend with all the clients to really give them that encouragement and confidence and get that going that takes money too it's just it's you know so whatever people can share and can contribute really um, it's really useful and uh, you know if you help other women that's not a bad thing then they can help their families and it's just valuable I've never been accused of being a chauvinist um, it really I never really even thought about women's rights as a separate issue uh, I, I knew it existed but I didn't think it, it never impacted me personally uh, when my wife got involved with the Women's Rights Center all of a sudden I said oh you know there's a center uh, women's rights it's it's an issue that you don't see every day um, and those people that know about it obviously uh, are affected by it but um, it, you know it was, it was just something in the background it really it really didn't come to fore but now having been involved with the women's rights information center I see the, the problems that women are going through uh, you've always read about them, but you never met, met them firsthand so when I do go into the center at times there are women that are distraught um, uh, and some of them have one two three kids on their arms and there's no man in the picture because he was abusive or he left and they're now without a home or without any way to feed the kids. Um, so until you see it really close up front, it's just a concept out there, women's rights, yeah, it's there, but until you see it firsthand then you really get the impact of what it means. Well, my, when my wife started volunteering uh, and then she wound up working and teaching the computer class, um, I was kind of like working in the, not really even working, just in the background. And then uh, there was a situation at the center where they needed uh, someone to come in and help them with the gala, which is their, their, their big fundraiser that we're at now. And the help that was needed was uh, setting up the web page and doing the constant contact outreach and coordinating uh, a lot of the ads that came in and making sure that the journal was put together. And since I had some uh, knowledge of how to do that, I was tapped and asked to come in and help. And since then, uh, I've been hooked, basically. I mean, uh, whatever they need, I'm there. Well, well, what they do for the community is just awesome. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, if it wasn't for that little white building on Palisade Avenue, um, they, who, who knows where these women would go. Um, uh, and a lot of women, when they come in, are, uh, from what I hear and what I've seen, is that they're very surprised. They didn't even know what the Women's Rights Information Center did. Um, so, so, so part of my involvement with it is to make sure that whenever it comes up, I, I talk about it because, again, if you don't know about it, you don't know you can get help, and uh, I can see what they do for the women. Awesome. In, in the years that I've been involved with them, I've seen uh, clients turn into staff, which is, you know, which is amazing. I mean, they started to help. They needed help, and now they turned it around, and they're helping other people uh, on the staff. Um, and, and you could just see it when when people come in uh, the first time you meet them they are downtrodden maybe the next time you meet them there's a little bit of a smile and by the time uh, that their relationship has grown with the women's rights information center now they they just uh, beam when they come in because they know that they're getting help and it's not that they're getting help but they're given the tools to help themselves and and once they're shown how to do that whether it be from legal ease or from money or from housing it's it's just it's just uphill in a positive way for them from that point on. Great, great, awesome. Um, what does it mean to be honored tonight? Uh, it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I don't need to be honored. I mean, I, I do it. I enjoy doing it. I was lucky enough, in a weird sort of way, when my my last gig ended uh, involuntarily, 
that I didn't have to worry about you know, running out and finding a full-time job again. And so I was lucky enough to be able to have this free time to, uh, to help out. So to be honest, come on, it's, it's, it's just silly. I mean, thank you, but uh, unnecessary. All right, great, great. Um, what does philanthropy, phil philanthropy uh, in general mean to you? It, 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 those that have, and there, there are those that have, and there are those that don't have. And I think it's, it's in, in, important for those that have, no matter how much or how little they have, to be able to turn it back over to those that don't have. Because even though you might think you're on hard times because of a job or because of financial woes, there's always someone worse off than you are. So if you can help out with time or with money or however you want to help out, uh, you know, it's, it's what I do. I mean, I got involved with uh, scouting, Boy Scouts, now officially the Scouts, um, years ago when my son was in scouting. And then he left. My son is now in his mid-30s and I'm still involved with scouting, still helping the kids out, still spending many, many hours helping the Scouts. Why? Because it's what I do. It's important for men to support women's rights and the Women's Rights Information Center specifically because there, there is a woman in their life, uh, whether it's a mom, a grandmother, a wife, girlfriend, mistress, whatever it is, there is a woman in your life. You can't do without them. And uh, the, the, the more that women are elevated to a, a position of equality, uh, whether it be in the job place or, uh, or just in general life, the better our life is. You can't, you can't go it alone. You just can't go it alone. So you might as well buckle under and realize that women are the future, one way or the other. And, and they're your future, so you might as well help out. <laughs> you might as well. <laughs> Great. Is that okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> now, Everybody's one step away from being the person who needs to walk through that door. And that's why everybody sh should be supporting the Women's Rights Information Center and all of the activities uh, that we have going on. Because it doesn't take much and it doesn't, and it's things that are not under your control. Um, and you could be the one who needs that help. So the more that you help us, you're helping everybody. And uh, we have people of all different walks of life, all different economies who come in through that door and all of a sudden they're the ones in need. So uh, we appreciate everything that, uh, that everyone can do because this, this could be you who needs our help the next time. So everybody's only one step away from being the person who's walking through that door needing the resources and needing the help that we can provide. And uh, so I encourage you to support us as much as possible.